My name is Palmer Lucky. I'm the founder of Oculus. So let's start by talking a little about GDC 2014 and what you're excited about that this new SDK will bring ultimately to video game experiences. So we're showing off our second dev kit called DK2. It has full positional tracking, low persistence, and a variety of other features, including a much refined um, software tool set that we're really excited to bring to developers so that they can make virtual reality experiences that have never been possible in the past. What do you envision some of the games that will be brought to fruition thanks to this technology? What kind of games are going to be brought to fruition? By this, maybe not by the DK2, but by this kind of technology, virtual reality, everything. It's it's the ultimate medium. It's something that gives artists complete creative, creative freedom. Um, if you can perfectly simulate reality, and we're not there, but we are going to have it someday, if you can do that, this kind of technology, you can literally make anything, whether it's a film or a, you know, a play, a game, anything that an artist can imagine, they can do, and they can make a person feel like they're experiencing it, not like they're just watching it happen through a window, and there's never been a technology like that. What has impressed you from some of the games that you've already seen these hundreds and hundreds of developers work on with your technology thus far? Everything. I, the, the, there's a few surprising components. One is the amount of innovation we've seen. People have been like, you know, porting their old experiences and seeing what they look like, but we've seen people come up with gameplay mechanics that would never have been possible without virtual reality. And those are the most exciting to me personally. And it's really catching on. People have wanted virtual reality for a long time. And now that there's tools that allow developers to make content for it, they're really jumping on it. In the last year, more virtual reality content has been developed than the last 20 years combined. When it comes to that content, talk a little about the ability now to be able to duck and cover, which is a, a, a gameplay staple, and what that adds to the virtual reality space. Uh, I mean, duck and cover is just one really specific example of a mechanic that we, you know, would use in real life or would use in a game, but um, you know, before couldn't be triggered in a natural way. The really key thing is allowing virtual reality to be as close to real life as possible. Allow it, not necessarily in terms of experiences, but the way it works. You want the vision, the tracking, the input to be as close to real life as possible so that we can leverage all of this training we have in our heads on how to do something. There's a big difference between learning how to push a button to duck and cover and actually ducking and covering you know, on an instinctive level behind something for cover. It's really going to be amazing to see what people do with all these new features. How will the improved visuals that people will be looking into in these uh, new OLED screens influence the total immersion and also maybe offsetting some of the motion sickness that people have had with previous iterations of virtual reality? All of the different technologies, the OLED screen, low persistence, motion tracking, they all work together to reduce simulator sickness. And um, for the consumer product, the limitation isn't going to be the hardware. We're going to get the hardware to where it doesn't make you sick. It's going to be about the experiences. And it will be possible to make experiences that don't make people sick. And just like in real life, there will always be experiences that do make people sick. Uh, that, that's where we're headed. When it comes to the, the full-on experience, how have you seen things improve with people wearing the goggles, but then having to kind of move around and, and, and find a keyboard or find a controller. How do you see that improving over time? I see it improving. What, what are some ways do you feel like we've seen things like the, uh, the uh, Virtuix Omni out there that adds a actual component of movement and uh, walking and running. How do you see things evolving when it comes to a full immersive VR experience? Well, things like that, they don't really add a component of movement, unless you mean movement of your legs. They don't actually trick your vestibular system. You're not actually accelerating through space or decelerating through space. Um, I, I think it's going to be a long time before we see something that's fully immersive, as in it triggers every single sense. But where we are right now with video and audio are already getting somewhere really powerful, and I think the next big step is going to be virtual reality input. And not just input, but input and output. Uh, most things like 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 Connect or a mouse, they're purely input devices. You are using them to manipulate something in a virtual world, but they don't reach back out at you. I think that the future of virtual reality input is going to be input devices that act as inputs and outputs that allow you to have some ha form of haptic sensation in the virtual world.